Hey guys, I'm Dan Cowles, Executive Creative Director at Adobe for video um, in the Adobe Studio team. I'm here with the, the team from uh, The Big Idea Last Mile, and we are going to talk about their film, which I loved. Um, first, hopefully we can do a quick intro with everybody. Go around the horn here. Um, I'm Sarah Klein. I am um, one of the directors, along with Tom Mason, of this film, and we are with Red Glass Pictures. I'm Angela Matusik, and I'm one of the executive directors. I had the pleasure of kicking this wonderful project off at HP and working with Red Glass and MIT Solve and Passion Point for the past couple of years on it. Hi, I'm Sarah Montefaro. I am the director of strategic partnerships at MIT Solve and have the great pleasure of working with some of our innovators which are who are featured in the film. I'm Marcus Petersell. I'm with Passion Point Collective. So we're a um, entertainment marketing agency, or we like to call the movie studio for brands. And we get to work with um, great directors like Sarah and Tom and great clients, HP and MIT Solve, tie all the pieces together. And then we handle distribution, marketing, promotion, and PR for the brand funded films. Awesome. Awesome. Th thank you. Um, so I, I love this film. It kind of for me personally, it, it spoke to me. It sort of, um, I mean, I watched a lot of great stuff. There was a lot of stuff that was really beautifully shot and really great causes, but this one kind of elevated for me personally for a variety of reasons that I hope we'll get to later. But first, maybe tell me a little bit about the um, how, how, how how this came into being. What was the the impetus and, and origin of this? What was the partnership and what was the driver? And I know it's part of a series, so maybe talk about that as as the... Ep, sort of ep, like the whole episodic and maybe this particular episode. Um, why don't I'll just kick it off because this is the part that I was involved in, um, which was that uh, I was working as the head of brand of content and creative at HP. And MIT Solve is one of the amazing partners that HP works with and has worked with for years. Um, and we had always talked about these incredible innovators that we were seeing, that we were doing stories on. Um, and honestly, it was just a mutual desire to find a way to elevate these stories and to really highlight this type of social entrepreneurship that's using technology to make the world better. Um, and it was like this desire to like just do something more with these incredible stories um, that kind of led us down this path. And we were really fortunate um, that we were able to pull in Red Glass Pictures, who we had worked with on a few other projects. And MIT um, also is familiar with Red Glass. So I'm going to toss it to Sarah with that. OK, yeah. So um, so yeah, it, originally, HP kind of came to us um, and said, hey, like an HP represented by Angela, who has had done amazing work with HP over the years um, and just said, you know, we're involved with Solve. There's incredible stories going on. Come on a call with us. Like, let's just talk. Um, you know, that started the conversation. Of course, immediately we keyed in on these stories and um, and not that long after decided to make it a, a series of sorts because we just felt that like each of these each pe each of these um, people we were covering had such kind of incredible stories that we wanted to be able to um, hone in on those. Uh, so yeah, it started that way. And then it kind of became an MIT. MIT kind of took the reins and it became produced with MIT um, and HP being sort of the, one of the primary funders. Um, so, you know, that, that just from a brand perspective, it was, it was interesting. It was, you know, a, MIT solve brand an HP brand and then it came to us um so there was you know there was a lot of like amazing partners involved early and and just a question so so I've only seen the one episode um but are all of the episodes all three par partners involved so all are going through MIT and HP yeah or a part of solve okay got it um yeah, you know, we do similar stuff at Adobe where we basically um, have told a series of stories around our our creative community and um, those there's great stories there. You know, the pe pe people that use our tools are fun to profile, they're creative and interesting and sounds like a very similar thing. I think one of the things I loved about this particular episode was the obvious thing is that Kitty is such a great, compelling character. 
And um, yeah. just like, how did um, you guys pick this as the episode to showcase? I'm assuming that there's other interesting folks in this space, but tell me a little bit about casting for this. Yeah, that's a great question. And just by the way, I, I love the the work that you guys do at Adobe. Those oh, are sweet, you. sweet pieces. Um, we So we knew that Solve had a group of people for that year. And I think um, it was about 35 people who were selected to be a part of Solve. And we were given basically a spreadsheet with emails and phone numbers. And we're like, go ahead. So, um, you know, started to kind of hone in on, uh, you know, who was doing what, where, how, and I think we ended up talking to 20 people, pre-interviewing 20 of them on the phone. And it was over the course of about two weeks that we started to really feel that, um, you know, these were our three people to profile. They happened to be three women of color. That was not at all, we had no goal of that in mind. We just felt like these stories and these people were kind of the best to tell for that year. It didn't mean that there weren't other incredible stories, but we were like, what's happening? You know, will you let us into it? How do you talk about your story? And with Kitty and, you know, some people, I don't know. I mean, should I, if for people who haven't seen the film, um, this is about, um, a scientist, an inventor who um, sets out to solve the incredibly huge problem of last mile vac vaccination or vaccine delivery. So this one woman um, sets out to basically create something that will keep these vaccines at the right temperature to get to the people who need them the most. Um, and we follow her for a year of that. Um, what we loved about Kitty is that it felt like she was, you know, pushing a boulder up a hill um, as and uh, was sort of at a breaking point when we met her. Um, and, you know, I in Solve was like, are you sure you want to like, are you sure you want to profile Kitty? I mean, they of course, they are behind all of them, but they were like, you know, she is facing a lot and. I don't know if you're going to get that perfect inventor story. Well, I and think we that's like, what's funny, but I think that's what's funny is to a filmmaker, like that's what, <laughs> yeah. exactly what you yeah. want, right? Is that that tension and that conflict and that like, you know, is it going to happen? That We that wanted question. that. Yeah, we, right, and yeah. we love, you know, she was really, really open, um, you know, wonderfully eccentric, brilliant. And we wanted that, you know, what if, uh, you know, and I think that's the most realistic oh story of all of of any of these stories is that you know they are this close at any given moment of folding um I, I i think it was super interesting that the um sort of the journey that she's on is not dissimilar from a filmmaker journey where basically you are there's the creative idea and then there's the business side of it that you have to also um solve and you know like a lot of us dreamer filmmakers we have ideas but we don't ever get them into film or on you know made um, those two sides of the story and also sort of the disruptive, like she's playing in this very disruptive space, but she's also just a little individual. Like it's just a really, her, her, um, and her, like the qualities of her character are so awesome. Like you mentioned eccentric, but, but also doing, doing what she's doing for seemingly all the right reasons, which are care and compassion and curiosity, as opposed to like trying to get rich, which is kind of a nice, it's nice to see. Right. And so, that's a lot. I mean, that actually unifies a lot of the solvers. Um, you know, that like that was really never something we we saw. I mean, these people are deeply entrenched in their solutions, primarily because most of them come out of their communities and out of direct, you know, need. Um, in Kitty's case, it's it's one step removed, but because she's a um cryogenic scientist, it it did kind of make a lot of sense. Um I mean, honestly, I've never thought of her journey as like a filmmaker's journey. And that gives me pause as to what, how detached I am <laughs> from my own process. Well, I just know that but, I, have, um, I have dreams she, all the time that never. No, it's brilliant. And <laughs> so. it, she went through the valley of death that we talk about in the right. film for any, any inventor, there's this thing called the valley of death, which is the time when you've come up with this incredible idea and it's, even prototyped, it even is made. And yet you have to find someone to buy into it, right? You need to get it out there. And that's where most projects die. Um, and that is exactly the same with yeah. filmmaking. You know, you can have the best subject in the world. Um, you can have so much, you can have your first funds, but it, you know, it's, it's like, how is it going to make it? <laughs> that's, you know, yeah. 
you know, and I will say that, I mean, the title is like super reflective of the story, but in some ways I feel like Kitty's story really epitomizes what our goal was for the film from the mm -hmm. very beginning, which was just, you know, and this kind of like ladders up to the mission of MIT Solve and the purpose of, you know, the sustainability goals at HP, which is this idea that, you know, one great idea can change the world. And all of these people in these films really embody that and believe that. And when you see yeah. the story, you're just like, you're just like, this woman's going to save lives, like help her. She needs, she needs to do her, her big idea. It needs to be a reality. Um, yeah, and that but, I think the goal, but, you know? but the tension of her also like, like she is eccentric and independent and like kind of have this beautiful, you guys kind of present her in a little bit of a beautiful mind vibe I'd, I'd say and um we that was her yeah <laughs> but yes it's real but um <laughs> but that um we don't even know if it's real right we don't even know if her idea is real so not only are funders or like is it scalable is it is it actually you know reproducible but we are waiting to find out if she's for real or not too which i think mm -hmm. is really kind of what also makes the story so compelling um Anyway, it, it it really works well. I love love her her journey. I love her character. She's such a great. I mean, just you you want to watch her on screen. It's so awesome. I mean, just as a little like nugget for those people who take the time to watch this, um, and who who are interested, she also is a swing dancer and like an incredibly good one. Um, so you know, there's just certain things we couldn't even bring into the actual film. And she makes her own clothes. She makes her own clothes. She she <laughs> and she's a swing dancer. So, <laughs> well, I, I also like that you guys shared that. Like, there's a moment where um, on the you know she's she's about to speak and she starts to talk and the mic is on and she's like oh and like she looks kind of bumbling. But then immediately after that, she's super eloquent and competent and confident. And I think. You kind of encapsulate both of those in her the the the, the way you tell her story, so it works really well. Thank you. Um, I'm curious about so for HP and MIT, what what were the goals for each of those organizations, and and sort of what was the what was the I don't know if uh, ROI well, KPIs are just more of well, a. Well, I mean, yeah. I would say that unlike other brand films. This film has, I guess you can almost call it like a PBS model, which was that um, Emma, HP was really doing this as part of its support for MIT Solve. And it was um, it was just, a, I was a, a donor and we sponsored the story. Okay. So there weren't any specific goals other than, you know, that it does ladder up to the ESG goals of the company and its bigger mission, which is to improve the world with technology. Um, and I'll let the other Sarah speak to um, MIT Solve. Yeah, I mean, at Solve, we really believe that in order to create a more sustainable and equitable world that we really need to lean into finding new voices and new ideas. And so if you look across our portfolio of innovators that we support, there are 300 more stories like Kitty's that embody those characteristics of grit and perseverance that resonate throughout the film. And so for us, it was a matter of, as Angela said earlier, really elevating these stories, these stories and getting it out to the world to share about the amazing work that these innovators are doing on the ground all over the world, addressing some of the most intractable, seemingly intractable challenges that the world faces. Everything from climate change to public health to improving learning milestones um, across the board. And for us, sometimes it's difficult to be shouting from the rooftops over and over again how amazing our own portfolio is. And we have to really rely on our partners to help us kind of reach new audiences. And that's what I think the films did so beautifully is in this partnership with HP and with Passion Point and with uh, Red Glass, we were able to not only tell those stories beautifully and eloquently in a way that really brought to life that entrepreneurial journey, but it also helped us to reach new audiences that otherwise wouldn't know about Solve and the work that our innovators are doing. Yeah, that's awesome. Um... Yeah, I, I want to see the other two of these now. I don't know if they'll if they're I'm I'm sure they're out there and available. I just I will go track them down. Um yeah. so on the on the HP side, I'm curious if um, you know, at Adobe we have different organizations within Adobe. 
as you said, that there's no sort of KPIs or goals of this other than to support your your partner in this and basically the efforts around MIT. But how did the um, so that funding source was a different one than say your brand brand funding, right? It would did that. Yeah, that but it was it's really just as part of the storytelling efforts around HP at the time um, to sort of, you know, use the power of the brand to shine a light on stories that needed to be told again. But they do all ladder up to the goals of the company um, and specifically, yeah. you know, about health. This one's about health equity, um, which is really important. It also touches upon climate change and its effects. The other stories are about racial justice and education equality. Um, so these are really big, important issues for HP as a company. Um, and, you know, and it's a way, you know, all of the stories that were told at HP um, during my time there were used in very similar ways to like elevate the brand's purpose, create new awareness for the brand and deeper engagement, um, and also giving the leadership the tools that they need to be able to talk about the beliefs and the purpose of the company in a meaningful way, which is where storytelling really connects. And, and that's the great thing about it. You can use it to like engage your global uh, employee base of 40,000 people around the world stuck at home at, during a pandemic, which we have also done through storytelling. Um, so those were, you know, the KPIs for HP and this particular project were very loose in that it came from a, a source of funding and sponsorship. Right. I mean, I know that on on Adobe side, we um, we used to do more of this kind of work, and we don't do as much of this as we used to. And I think that that's one of the things I'm trying to drill down on a little bit. And maybe we, we would love, love 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 to hear from Passion Point a little bit, um, Mar Marcus. But um, how how do you see trends in this space? Like, are companies, um, you know, I'm I have the sense that a lot of us are moving towards more actionable KPI ROI dri driven things or shorter form content. Um, is that true? Not true? What's your sort of take on 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 that? And and specifically maybe around HP as well, and you know how they're continuing to play in this space or not. Um, just just curious. It's really across the board, to be honest. <clears throat> we probably interact and serve as an agency for about 15 brands. And every one had different KPIs, different goals, different objectives, and different structures within the brand that we would work with. So there is so really there's a lot of um variances when you look right. at this platform overall and what the brands want to get out of it. Some of the films are brand oriented, and there's a brand that you can quickly see some we've done with Sarah. Um Others, the first one we worked on with HP with Angela's History of Memory, and that did sort of tie back to, you know, some products in, in a very, you know, interesting way, while others, you know, don't. So it really varies greatly, and it really also all depends on what structure the brand has for storytelling, because they're all, very, you know, a lot of a lot of the brands are going for films that exist already. A lot are insisting the products are in it. A lot are insisting the products are nowhere near it. So, yeah, honestly, well, but from HP, um, Angela and and Sarah, the three of us did films before the big idea, and they were also a little different, but usually highlighting some, you know, just amazing, innovative humans that are helping to change the world. So that's been kind of a consistent theme. Yeah, and I I I I love this film because it's not trying to be super connected to the brand, and it really is just a story that's really well well told with a great character and a great um, um, impetus. Um, I think it really depends internally on where what department like the fun the the pro, the project is initiating from. Like, I, I would say though, Dan, this film is not an HP brand film; it's an MIT Solve brand film. Right. And if you when you watch the films, Solve does play true. a role in all true. the films. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I do think that if you just sort of take, you know, take HP out of the equation, because we were just a sponsor of it, um, it's really more of an MIT Solve brand film because it's talking about its values and it's and it has a strong presence in the film, but it's completely organic. Yeah, I, I guess because I work in tech, I, I I think of HP as the brand and MIT as like the vehicle to tell. But that's but you're totally right. And I I, I see that. I mean, um. Well, one of the best testaments, though, 
yeah. to show that we've accomplished goals is when you when a brand film wins an award at a brand film festival, okay, you kind of you know you expect that. But this film we put out very early to film festivals, and it normally it takes every few months we get an acceptance. All of a sudden, our team was like, "Whoa, we have acceptances." I'm like, "Plural?" They go, "No, five." Like, whoa, how could that happen so quickly? And the festivals were happening quickly, like a month later. And then we get notification, we won. We're best documentary here, best. And those festivals were not brand film festivals. We were going up against the top independent filmmakers, and we won it series fest with some fantastic directors. And they had no idea, you know, that there were brands. So to us, that was such great affirmation that. This content was great. The characters were great. And we were able to, you know, go head to head against other great independent films. Yeah, I, I think there's two paths like I I, I want to go from here. One is um, sort of the, you know, as a filmmaker m myself, we want to make le legitimate standalone content that 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 lives on its own, that not isn't necessarily associated with tied to the brand or or would, ex you know, would. Um, would would is it is successful as a story whether it's connected to a brand or not um it's also interesting like as like depending on where the audience is and i know some of this maybe this was used internally at hp at mit i know they probably use it externally um the 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 streaming world has evolved a lot recently around br branded content where if there's a brand associated with it they kind of want you to pay to play like how how um Maybe those are two questions. And the first one is, um, maybe we already talked about the first one, which is sort of the d d different kinds of co content. But on the second one, let's talk about the platforms and where this stuff will go out and play and live. And what are the opportunities for this kind of co co content? You mentioned festivals. Um, there was also the web. What about streamers and that kind of thing? Like what are sort of some of the, the desires for- Yeah, so for this content? film in particular, um, we feel, and you're right, as soon as we pick up the phone to a media outlet, they say how much. So they know that we work for brands. So that's a challenge. But we've done such great work um, that we feel we can transcend that. So we went to the media outlets and said, I'm sorry, this is a great film. Don't ask us for a check. You should have this content. And many just no, we have we have ad sales and we have to play the game. But in this case, Condé Nast said, we love this film. And in fact, our editor-in-chief of Glamour magazine loves this film and we want to put it on Glamour. We need a small buy just to make sure we can drive eyeballs, but we really want to be your premier partner. So they came on board and um, really were, you know, we have just hundreds of thousands of views because of them. So they were a great media partner. And now we have two other streaming outlets we're going to announce in the next few weeks that are going to pick it up as well. So um, the, as long as the content's great and no one has, you know, what I always call dancing Coke cans, there's right. no overt branding, good content will always shine through. Yeah. Um, I mean, else? also like, you know, just, you know, we make branded films. We make, we do also editorial projects and mu museum installations and, um, you know, I, it feels like they all kind of have a little different life, um, you know, so there there have been projects that we've been kind of shocked. I mean, this this has some of that, but some of our uh, other branded projects, uh, you know, we're all of a sudden, you know, we're getting we're on, you know, Marcus sort of was part of this, you know, we're on the Today Show or we're on, you know, Kelly Clarkson or there's, you know, there's some big um you know, there's there's a tension that goes way beyond anything you could ever pay for. Um, we've also been surprised, you know, there there are projects where I do think um, editorial outlets are just much more keen to like sniff out how things are made and from and from where. And, um, you know, there have been disappointments along the way where we have felt that we have had films that, um, you know, should live somewhere, but because they had, you know, even, you know, any loose of involvement or total funding by a brand, you know, they, they weren't allowed. So it's, you know, it's a, I mean, this is a, a nuanced conversation about where each of these projects can live. And I don't think we should ever go in with like this candy code coded idea that like, Oh, we're going to make a brand film. It's just going to like go everywhere. I think like it's a serious conversation at the early, at the, 
beginning of any project um, that kind of helps you to understand like, where can this live? How can we be smart about this? Um, I will say to you, you know, another thing to note for this, oh, sorry, I was going to say like, one thing, Sarah, that I think we noticed is that, um, you know, because HP took this like backseat role, like we honestly went into this thinking that because it was MIT Solve, which is a nonprofit, that it would sort of clear the path for us. Um, and it didn't, it didn't, mm-hmm. it did for some outlets that have a really strong editorial integrity as they should. Um, they consider, you know, MIT Solve as, as a brand, brand as any other brand. And it didn't matter if it's a nonprofit. It was just eye opening. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's not like a complete block, right? Like, I think that there are smart people out there, you know, Marcus as one of them, who is, you know, we and, and smart filmmakers and smart producers that are really trying to, like, you know, to bring really good films to a broader audience. And, you know, so it, I think it's it's case by case. The perception is, and Sarah gave a great example, we were at another brand storytelling conference live and we were doing a panel, Angela's in the audience, on one of our films. And, you know, people are like, oh, so show us the results. So we're going through all the numbers and the PR. And we said, we did this segment on the Today Show. And there's a woman from one of the largest PR agencies. She goes, well, paid, obviously. I'm like, no, not paid. She goes, NHP was mentioned? I go, yeah, the logo was right up at the screen. Because that's impossible. <clears throat> so sometimes you have to do the impossible. But because it was great content that Sarah created, and the edit- and the editorial teams were like, great content's great content. And they can tell ad sales, sit down. Just sit down for a minute. And and so, but doesn't happen every day and it's still challenging, but it does happen. Well, and I think the other component of that is how much does the brand want to participate in in editorial and, and shaping the story and how much do you have sort of free free reign? And I um like it seems like in this case HP was pretty hands-off in terms of the storytelling. I mean, but, Angela, when 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 Angela was was guiding HP, um there was a tremendous uh, buffer between the filmmakers and whomever was there, you know, looking at the films. I mean, she created this amazing space for us to create. Um, and and this carried through with with Solve as well. I mean, we we did deliver films and we did get notes. And honestly, we considered them, but we we were not forced to do anything we didn't want to do. Um, and it, you know, it, it's a really, really smart process. Um, I don't think that happens all the time either because, you know, oh. people can have these big ideas and then all of a sudden the higher ups see it and they're like, oh, but we need to place this in there. We did, you know, and so we've been lucky and it really depends on who at the brand you're dealing with. And, yeah, um, yeah, you well, know. We our brands in the past to let people like Sarah do what yeah. she does. Mm-hmm. And the reason is, when we start doing PR for the film and media is like, yeah, you, you're just produced a big commercial. I'm like, here's the contract with the money blocked out. Director has final cut, not the brand. And it shuts them up. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, OK, so it's smart to do it. Plus, let creatives. Yeah. Be creative. And I just want to say, too, that if we just take this back to like our original goal, which was completely unified, was to tr- turn the spotlight on the people in the film. So if so, and that's worked in the past for our other projects as well, where it's not about the brand taking the spotlight. It's about the people that we're telling the story. They take, we want them on the Today Show. We want them to show up in the LA Times and they do. And so these films, which is why, you know, I mentioned ESG goals, like the thing that I think brands need to consider is that, investing in storytelling, investing in filmmaking can have a even more of an impact than like a straight donation can. Because as Marcus said a minute ago, if your film and your subject is suddenly on the Today Show, that's worth millions of dollars. And so your, your little funding that you put behind a film suddenly is having this enormous impact on somebody's life who's now sitting on a couch on the Today Show. And it doesn't happen always, but that's ultimately our goal um, with this project was to like, we want to change the lives of the women that we're telling these stories for. 
And, you know, and I don't know where the, I haven't, I would love to actually hear, I don't know how Kitty's doing these days, but, you know, I think even as you see the film, we, the film making itself had an impact on her project, which is incredible. When we yeah, I think series right. fees, they were like, well, here's the cash prize. And we're all looking around like, well, where does that, I mean, it wasn't huge, but it was, you know, you know and I said, Kitty, let's get it to Kitty. She's trying to change. And we gave, and she was, first of all, she was just so appreciative. And it was just so, you felt like you, I, we helped make this person just a little, help her move an inch. So it's fabulous that that could happen. Yeah, I think the thing about this piece, though, is it passes like, you know, the sniff test about being feeling pure to me. Like it doesn't have um, brand fingerprints all over it, either either MIT or HP. I mean, HP doesn't feel like they're on it at all. And MIT feels very organic. Um, I think that um, getting that like my in my own experiences, um, a lot of people want to come in and play when they have an opportunity like this and can not trusting the filmmakers to sort of do what they do well and, and trusting the instincts of the filmmaker really can be to the detriment of the brand in, in the long run when they try to sort of turn it into something that it shouldn't be, um, which is marketing. Um, anyways. Yeah. And I mean, I will say that we are a little like guard doggy, um, you know, from the very get go with projects we do. Um, so, you know, if you trust us to bring, make the film, you know, there's there's a there's a trust along the way that you know has to kind of keep we we keep showing up trusting each other <laughs> you know it's not well, just I, I think um, it's a, it's important right. to set that expectation early on and make sure right. that they're up front so that then you can or have it in the contract so then you can like that's a, a good tip for our filmmakers out there to sort of um fight for that up front and and establish that up front you know when possible I think also this is a pretty unique situation in that Kitty's story is Solve's story and Solve's story is Kitty's story that, you know, we can't really tell Kitty's story without talking about our brand, which is to help innovators. That is what we are in the right. business of doing. That's and part so of the story, I, right. Right. And so I don't think that it is the typical brand storytelling story that you may hear. It's a very specific narrative to solves you know value proposition which is serving as kind of this intermediary connecting these two worlds of the funding and the resources of the world and the great ideas and the innovators and bringing them together on one platform and i think that in telling the story of what we do you can't tell it any better than through the eyes of a, a an innovator like kitty yeah and i think that really that came through like the um the the components of this for me is like very very clean and clear storytelling with also a very compelling um, and seemingly very altruistic driver of for a cause with a really great character on top of it which really makes everything kind of all all the other parts just work very organically I, I loved it um, um, I know there's a lot of different kinds like we make all kinds of different content that is branded and is goes from marketing to completely documentary and everything in between and product stuff. Um, so there's a lot of variety and nuance. And I think every piece, every project's a little bit different, but um, really love this, this, this one. Maybe our last question is, um, what are some of the, the takeaways that maybe to share? What did you learn from this or already know going into this that um, made this successful in your, in your guys' eyes? And I just, I'd love to hear from all of you basically on I mean, I'll, I'll, I think I've kind of said it from a filmmaker's perspective, but, um, you know, I think we were surprised by, um, you know, how hard it is to do what someone like Kitty does. So, you know, you can, you know, that kind of abstractly, but then when you get in the weeds with them and you see sort of the, um, the rejection, the financial peril, um, the doubt, the self-doubt, the depression. Um, I think that um, was something that hit us. And also, you know, the other side was, um, I, I also think we were really like delighted by the fact that um, there was some, there were people that were wanting her to succeed and stepped forward to enable that. Um, and, you know, so, from a purely narrative sense, I mean, we felt so like 
wonderfully taken on this ride. Um, the, you know, su the surprises on a sort of stepping back, um, you know, we, we did think that this would be considered less of a brand film than it was. So that was a bit of a surprise, but we were ultimately really pleased by the film festival, um, response by what happened with glamour. And I think like, I think that there's, I think that these films are just kind of at the beginning, hopefully of their, of their lives. Like they've, it's, it's started to really, um, snowball in a sense. So, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think like on a distribution end as the filmmakers, I don't know, this is the most frustrating part, right? I mean, it's like, you're just like, okay. Um, so we're, we're starting to really see a lot happen and, and that's been fun. So. Um, you know, one lesson from this film that I think other brand storytellers could learn is this idea is thinking about patience and letting stories um, unfold as they need to be unfolded. You know, I think none of us, when we started working on this project, thought it would take as long as it did. You know, it was certainly impacted a little bit by COVID. Um, but more than that, it was the women's stories and just how long it took to really capture the arc and what they were going through. And so many, so many brands, you know, they just want to move quickly or they think quarter to quarter. So, you know, this film took more than a year to produce. And, you know, and I think that's, it's a, it's a, a shoot. wonderful thing. Yeah, <laughs> to shoot. shoot. Took more than a year to shoot. Mm -hmm. It's been two years since we've, you know, over two years since we had the idea. And things have changed, you know, things have changed at HP in that time, things have changed in our world and the tech industry. I mean, nobody was talking about AI when we started this film, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like the world has changed and but the stories still matter and they're still really strong. And so I guess my advice to other brand storytellers would be to like try to find carve out the space to tell the difficult stories that take a long time to tell. And they're not going to be very easy, but they're yes. going to be rewarding. <laughs> I think it was really, to me, it was to give hope. So I don't know if watching The Voice gives you hope if you want to be the next, you know, singer and rock star. But for this, for all the innovators out there that were frustrated, just like these three were, and just like you saw that frustration with Kitty, that here's at least one vehicle and this is you know mit self this is a vehicle there's a path this is possible you can apply and you're going to be reviewed and you're going to be looked at so don't feel you know you're out there in the cold and there's just no you know how am i going to get funding how am i going to get distribution so it really should look what the three of them did in in the series and it gives hope to the because if we don't have innovators the world won't change and they need to know there's a path and I felt telling this story showed there's a path. I think from a solve perspective, and Sarah kind of alluded to this as well in her response, but I think it, what it comes down to is the power of partnership for solve. We know that in order to solve some of the world's most pressing challenges, no one person or organization can go at it alone. And I think that narrative is, is um, uh, you know, showcased very well in the film that, uh, you know, Kitty really needs help and she needs partners to support her, whether it's funding or capacity building, um, she needs uh, you know, partners like Solve and others to help her in her entrepreneurial journey. And the same can be true for just the filmmaking process itself for the big idea that, you know, our limit, we have our own limitations and we have our own value proposition that we can bring to the table. But through this amazing partnership that I think was kind of, you know, a match made in heaven in a lot of ways, um, it took a lot of hard work, but there was also some serendipity involved too, and some really good luck that this recipe of each of us bringing our own value propositions to the table resulted in, a, in an amazing story, in an amazing series that I think we'd love to do season two of at some point in the future. And so I guess my my call to action would be if there are other uh, folks out there who are interested in telling stories like Kitty's, um, like the other stories from the big idea to reach out to us because we'd love to tell these stories again.
Awesome. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for the chat. Love the film. Love the partnership. Love everything about it. So um, thanks again. And um, see you, see you all soon. Thanks so much, Dan. Okay. Thanks, Dan.